Welcome to Radio Out There. Barry Eaton here with you once again. Sandy, you know so much about magnesium. It's such an important thing in the body. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about why magnesium is so important and why uh, it, it is at the moment that we need more magnesium. Well, in today's modern and um, industrialized societies, we are we're having an epidemic of stress. Mm. So all of the diseases, the degeneration diseases, have at their fundamental core critically low magnesium deficiency. It doesn't matter if you look at diabetes or heart disease or cancer, or immune system disorders. All of those diseases, those breakdowns in the body come primarily from not having enough magnesium. And I try and stay away from thinking that oh, it's all just one thing. It never is just one thing. The body as a whole unit, it needs many nutrients working together. But in it, in, invariably, like a tree, there's a trunk and then there are several branches. So you need to think of magnesium as the trunk of that nutritional tree, holding up all the other branches of the other nutrients. Or another analogy I like is a conductor of an orchestra and if you remove the conductor the other instruments may still be present but they're not functioning they're not harmonizing you don't get any leverage out of them and so often in about 80 percent of cases if they lift the levels of magnesium in the body to optimal levels most things are sorted out most things balance out if they're on a fresh healthy uh, diet you know fresh organic foods and avoiding the chemicals and not smoking obviously you have to have a whole lifestyle approach mm. and if there is anything left over it's usually very easy to deal with and easy to isolate but in most cases people will find a lot of symptoms disappear seemingly unrelated mm. so for instance there are important cofactors with magnesium such as calcium now we do need calcium in the body but if you have low magnesium calcium becomes a bully it starts to suppress the magnesium it starts to flood out of the bones into the soft tissue and joints so you'll always tell someone who with a with a severe magnesium deficiency if they're getting hypercalcemia which is an oversupply of calcium in the soft tissue and joints so arthritis uh, gristly bones and joints um, general stiffening of ligaments that's all a sign that magnesium could be very low and also the body becomes very acidic and so what are we seeing now that people when they're restoring their alkaline condition health improves the microbiome of the gut improves but you need your electrolyte balance to help achieve the alkalinity. Mm. It's magnesium that's the primary electrolyte to hold the charge in the cell membrane. And that's what we're talking about. Magnesium works at the bioelectrical level. It's coming in to help the mitochondria make adenosine triphosphate. So that's the energy currency of the cell. Mm -hmm. So virtually nothing works very well without enough magnesium. Magnesium supports enzyme activity. There are our doing proteins, they do jobs in every cell, different kinds of jobs. Without magnesium, we, we don't get the bioelectrical energy production. So it's a bit like plugging your socket into the wall. So you might have your hardware there going, it's all right, it's doing well, they're your physical cells, and then you've got the software, which is the information in the DNA. Mm to tell the cell how it should be operating and what it should be doing, but neither of them work unless you plug it into the wall. You yeah. need your electrical, your bioelectricity to fire everything up, and that's what magnesium does. Magnesium's involved in metabolism, so if it's critically low, it can lead to metabolic syndrome, and diabetes type 2, um, many um, immune system disorders, and even there was a, a study in 2002 by University of Athens where they studied people undergoing chemo and radiation therapy, and those scientists found that both of those therapies caused severe loss of magnesium, and that low magnesium itself was carcinogenic. So they mm -hmm. were advising people in, the, in the, where it was published in the Oncology Journal to use magnesium supplementation if they were undergoing these therapies to to put back what's being lost. And so that's what we're coming down to. We, we have a lot of diseases and uh, deficiencies and illnesses popping up today which are stress related. And why that is is because stress depletes magnesium. 
Today we don't get enough magnesium in the soils, there's not enough in the foods, and we, we can't put enough back from the foods to compensate for the stress. Yeah. So in that magnesium bank account, over time as we get older, it gets lower and lower and lower. So you've done a, obviously a huge amount of research in all of this. You've been doing this for quite some time. Well, What's your background in this? Yeah, I do have a Bachelor of Arts degree, but it's in the humanities and business and marketing. So I've always been involved in sales and I had my own magazine publication for 11 years. That's a very tough business. I had to do lots of um, round-the-clock vigils to get the print online and they don't call them deadlines for nothing. <laughs> I had way too many deadlines and finally I so depleted my magnesium and I don't smoke and I ate fresh healthy organic foods and I took a handful of all sorts of supplements every day, whatever I could find from the health food shop and zinc and bee group and, and I, you know, I rattled when I walked and yet I couldn't understand why I was suffering heart arrhythmias. I, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue. I felt like my whole nervous system was just shaky and it, and it felt like a car out of tune, you know. Mm. But, but, yeah. That really uneven and it's a, such a horrible feeling. It feels like any moment things are going to stop. Right. And so one day they rushed me to hospital thinking I was having a heart attack. But the um, cardiologist found after all the testing the heart muscle was fine. I had no blockages in my arteries. He said, he said you just got to put up with this like everyone else. He said, you'd be amazed how many people have this problem. In your case, we can't give you a drug that slows the heart. Otherwise, it could give you a heart attack. Of course. I had very low blood pressure at the time as well. So I, I went away from that with mixed feelings, feeling a bit frustrated that I didn't have an answer, but also kind of relieved that I didn't have to go down the drugs and surgery path. Mm. So I, I put my research skills to work and I ordered in all the books I could find off the internet about magnesium and looked up the studies in the back and I, I ordered in because in Australia at the time you couldn't get magnesium chloride so I ordered it in from Europe. Mm. And Just to explain, in the background here we're at the hotel with the Nexus conference and everybody yes. seems to be gathering behind us, the, yes, all the staff, so that's the noises, so we just have to live with that for a minute, Sandy. Yes, it's ramping up here. I ordered in magnesium salts from Europe, you couldn't get them in Australia anywhere, so I used them on myself, I did foot soaking and bathing every night, and I found over the first few weeks my heart arrhythmias had calmed right down. That's fantastic. That didn't completely become eliminated because mm. now I know I wasn't using enough at the time. I was a bit scared because there was sort of no protocols to follow in my condition. So I was like, you know, using a tiny bit at a time and titrating mm. upwards. Mm. But I know now I could have used a lot more to achieve a faster result. L let me give you an example. We're all different. So my husband had... He had had in 2004 a quintuple heart bypass and he was avoiding all of the drugs except he couldn't do without the blood pressure lowering drugs. Mm. And he was on those for three years and we both started using the magnesium. We shared our foot safe buckets. <laughs> and he found after two weeks that he was starting to get dizzy when he bent down to tie his shoelace. Took his blood pressure and found that being on both magnesium and the drugs pushed his blood pressure down too low. So, I mean, I, I don't advise people to quit their drugs, but in conjunction with the doctor, he was able to titrate down and it, uh, gradually wean himself off those blood pressure lowering drugs because when your body has optimal levels of magnesium, blood pressure is normalised. That's one of magnesium's roles. Mm. It normalises the blood pressure, it helps the blood flow more fluidly because it um, helps deliver oxygen in the hemoglobin, um, helps deliver a negative charge so that the blood cells are bouncing with one another, flowing more fluidly through the body rather than the opposite effect, which, which is a positive charge which makes them clump and stick together, and that's a thrombotic effect. So magnesium is anti-thrombotic, and this has been found with many studies. There's a hundred years of magnesium research out there. It's nothing new under the sun. If you go out and, and look for it and, and draw through all the literature, you can put it all together. And some very good magnesium researchers out there have written excellent books. So I read Dr. Mark Serkis's Transdermal Magnesium Therapy, Dr. Carolyn Dean's The Magnesium Miracle, excellent books, very easy to read. Um, and also The Magnesium Factor by Mildred Selig and Andrea Rosanoff that's more specific about diabetes and heart disease and talks about their experiments in the 90s. 
uh, where they were able to show and prove that the precursor of type 2 diabetes is critically low chronic levels of magnesium. Mm. And here's how it works. Magnesium and sugar are like a seesaw. The lower the magnesium in the body, the higher the sugar cravings. Oh. And the higher the magnesium levels, the lower the sugar cravings. Right. So and this could explain things like candida. Yes, because candida proliferates when the cells become too acidic. Mm. And, and once it gets down to um, just a bit over 5 pH or plus 30 millivolts, that triggers the spores of the candida to morph into a different form. Yep, yep. They start to parasite on our cells and corrupt them, and that's, that's the beginning of cancer. And so if you control your environment with all the right nutrients and, and everything that the cell needs to stay in that slightly alkaline, you need about 7.3 to 7.4 range of humidity for your immune system to function well, for you not to be eaten and gobbled up by the pathogenic bacteria, because their role is really to recycle us back into the environment. So if we're not well, we start getting eaten for lunch by all those m m microbiota. Yeah, those that nasties. Well, we call them nasties, but they have a function in nature too. They're the nature's recyclers. So while you're alive and you want, you want your life force flowing through you with full force and energy and vitality, hmm. that needs to be slightly alkaline. That means you've got a little bit more electrons flowing, that bioelectrical yep. juice, that life force is flowing through you. And then your immune system works well. You're able to um, function. Those pathogens are always going to be floating around somewhere but in the spore form because they don't morph unless it gets down to the right acidic level that they like. Mm. And sugar metabolism causes more acid. Yeah. So, and as they move in and make home in, in your guts, they then produce even more acid. So yeah. it's a downward spiral. Sure. As you lift magnesium, because it's coming in at the bioelectrical level, it's fueling your enzymes. It's helping your enzymes to work. So very important detox enzymes, such as glutathione and uh, superoxide dismutase, they um, chelate, they, they grab onto heavy metals and pollutants in the body and help, um, and, and sulfates help as well, sulfur. They help the body detox itself. But for all those uh, uh, reactions, you need the electrical stimulus Mm. that magnesium provides. Magnesium actually organizes the other electrolytes. So we do need some sodium and potassium and calcium, but they are really more instruments in that orchestra where magnesium mm. is controlling them. Magnesium is the controller of the calcium. We used to think it was the other way around. We used to think you need a lot more calcium than magnesium, and now researchers are finding it's the other way, the other way around. Completely. Right, yeah. We need more magnesium than calcium. Okay, well, how do we get this magnesium into our body? I mean, people might be thinking, all right, well, I'll go out and buy a, a bottle of magnesium tablets at the health food store or the chemist or whatever. Is that enough? Well, look, it's better than nothing if you have nothing else. And even our foot soak in Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate, mm. can help. But those effects are very short term. The body kicks out the magnesium sulfate too quickly. It doesn't retain it long enough. And researchers have found over the years that magnesium chloride in the natural salt form, magnesium chloride hexhydrate, which is magnesium chloride joined with six water molecules, yep. is the ideal form. Just add water and the molecules are completely ionized. In other words, swallowed up by the water molecule. Therefore, they require no more digestion and are absorbed very easily by cells hmm. because the the main constituency, the, the, the biggest electrolyte in the body is actually chloride. And so the cells are hungry for chloride. Mm. And that's why magnesium chloride is absorbed so readily and retained oh, much longer. It's already in the right form. Now, when you have a magnesium tablet, often, you know, the cheap form in the, in the health food shops could be magnesium oxide, which is okay if you want to have a bowel purge because they're very good at relieving yeah, constipation. and muscle aches and things. But you're only getting 4% of that magnesium uh, being digested and passing through the bowel wall right. in that magnesium oxide form. Sure. And even the better magnesium compounds, magnesium glycinate, magnesium citrate, magnesium taurate, all of those forms have to be digested in the stomach. Sure. In other words, the body has to pull those compounds apart yep. and 
find some chloride in the body to rejoin that magnesium up with so that it can be absorbed by the cells. And then you have to get magnesium through the gut wall. A lot of people have this gunk on the line, and you know, this mm. build up over years where the body hasn't been able to clean it, so sure. they might have you know, the wrong bacteria in there creating a you know, so if we eat margarine, that's one molecule away from plastic, and that can actually cause a film, or sometimes even plasticizers we may ingest yeah, without knowing. Stuff. Terrible food additives they use today. And these are very unnatural um, substances the body finds it difficult to break down because, they're, yeah. because they are unnatural, they're sure. synthesized. And so they can form a lining. There have actually been researchers in the past that have done um, autopsies on cadavers and been able to peel a layer of rubber off the intestinal lining mm, mm. or rubber type substances that are you know, synthetic products that we absorb. We don't really know what we absorb from foods. So to be on the safe side, I, I would advise, that's what I do, go for organic as much as possible if you can grow your own vegetables. Um, try and you know do the best you can yeah, uh, with the food because health is all about nutrition and when we absorb through the skin we absorb magnesium uh, and other electrolytes magnesium chloride comes packaged with a, a whole host of sea trace minerals that we also need boron silica strontium iron calcium they're all wrapped up in nature's little vitamin um, sorry uh, mineral pill from the ocean um, by the way you make your own vitamins when you have enough minerals except for vitamin C, so I also take extra vitamin C, C yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. because we need antioxidants, so when you're metabolizing and you're producing acids, they become free radicals, they start to gobble us up, mm. and we need antioxidants which are electron donors that neutralize or buffer that acid, and that helps stabilize that system so we, we don't yeah. dissolve away, mm. and so antioxidants help <coughs> the body balance itself from the process of metabolism where it actually causes acid byproducts. Mm. So the more un antioxidants uh, you put into your body, the more you can help your body seesaw in that nice equilibrium balance. Mm -hmm. And magnesium also behaves like an antioxidant as well. It's also part of donating electrons into the body. But, you know, doing more is better. So fresh, healthy, organic foods, avoid the toxins and the chemicals, don't eat packaged foods. Packaged foods come... Um, with often additives we don't even know that are there exactly. or what they mean, their the names and numbers. Yeah, I know. It's and, and, and in some places you don't know if you're eating genetically modified ingredients. Or cardboard. Cardboard, yeah. They don't have them sometimes on the label, so yeah. it's very difficult today um, to know everything, but you can do the best you can. Mm. And the superior part about absorbing through the skin is the skin is the largest organ in the body, and it um, has channels that open and close. When you sweat, you're sweating out your electrolytes. So it's also able to soak electrolytes back up through the skin. We found, apart from soaking and bathing in the hot water with crystals, you don't always have time for that, that um, if you use a magnesium moisturizer, which is what we've developed, the combination of the magnesium ions infused in the natural butters and oils assist the absorption of the magnesium mm. better into the um, the outside layer of the skin, the epidermis. And then where it sits, and it plumps up the skin cells, and uh, it's got a combination of uh, oil water emulsion held together by magnesium ions. So it's, it's like a whole meal, just ideally designed for the skin. The skin loves it. It's mm. exactly the constituents that the that the skin loves for, for healthy operation. So it can open and close, there's nothing to clog it. So if you were using petrochemical ingredients, for instance, and um, those uh, petroleum type products, they're blockers. So they can be used as a skin barrier, they can be used to repel water, but in this case, we're using natural oils and butters so the skin can breathe, mm. and so it can absorb more magnesium. So it sits then in the and the epidermis, the outside layer of the skin, as a food source, just like minerals in the soil and the tree roots go down and they absorb the minerals from the soil, the tree never overdoses itself, but it has, body regulates itself it has a smorgasbord, mm. the same as with the skin. The skin mm. becomes a reservoir or a smorgasbord of nutrients. Mm. 
where the body draws in what it needs as it needs when it needs but eventually everything goes in and it's something that you can use as much of as you like with never a danger of overdosing compared to oral substances you never know how much is too much how much is not enough Mm. if are you pushing something else out you know because there's this interaction between nutrients so you have too much calcium it will suppress the magnesium um there are various metals that compete um but if you have a nice synergy the way we find it in sea salt is generally they're not a nice balance to support life funnily enough that (laughs) Life supports the ocean. Exactly. The ocean supports ocean life. Ocean supports the life, yeah. We, we are, in, a, in effect, our rivers of blood are, in effect, a mirror or a reflection of what's in the sea, of the ocean. Yeah. Except it's about 50% or thereabouts dilution, so it's much more diluted. Mm. So, you know, the majority is saline, sodium. Mm. But then you can get too much sodium if your other electrolytes aren't in a proper balance. But if you get raw sea salt and use that on your food instead, the food tastes much better. Your body kind of knows, wow, this is great. It's a softer taste. Whereas isolated or extracted sodium chloride is very sharp. It, it, it actually burns the gills of fish. Mm. So it's not the way we meant to ingest mm. sodium. Sodium can be ingested via vegetables, so, so celery and, you know, many, you can look them up online, um, what, vegetables and fruits yeah, have so. certain nutrients. Be careful if you have metabolic syndrome or diabetes, be careful of fruit because the fructose and the sugars are difficult to assimilate when your magnesium is low. You need a lot of magnesium to metabolize sucrose mm. and fructose. So you need um, 56 magnesium molecules to, to turn into energy every fructose molecule and 28 magnesium molecules for every sucrose molecule. Now when you, when it comes packaged in a whole uh, fruit, that fruit has its own set of antioxidants and minerals so they contribute to the metabolism mm. of that sugar. But when you, so normally, if you're normally healthy, don't turn, t- fruit is very good food, gives you lots of enzymes and, and other antioxidants. But I'm talking about people who are on a critical end of that spectrum of metabolic syndrome for a time being, they have to be really, really strict with the sugars. Mm. So I'm not talking about just sugar like your... No, not in your tea and coffee, no. That's... I'm talking about all sugars. All sugar intake, yeah. And that includes pasta and bread and a processed carbohydrates are treated by the body just like sugar. Mm. So they do the same thing. You could be virtually eating loads and loads of sugar by eating your pasta and your, your breads. And when you don't have enough magnesium, you can't metabolize all of those carbohydrates. Mm. And so what the liver does is turns into fat. So first of all, you get a fatty liver, yeah. and then you start to get fat around the middle, the adipose tissue, you get the muscle on top, and then you move into like an apple shape around the middle, but you could still have um, thinner arms and legs. And that kind of shape is what they call pre-diabetic shape. You already know you're moving in that direction yeah. and your shape like changes like that and that's another sign you have very low magnesium so so in good health you need to do a lot of things to, to juggle and to keep that equilibrium so avoiding the toxins the chemicals actually are stored in fat tissue if your liver is having trouble getting rid of toxins because your magnesium is low and your enzymes aren't working to detox you to protect your organs the body will store toxins in the fat tissue and will make more fat tissue to store those toxins yeah. That fat tissue then becomes inflamed because it's attracting many more microbes yep. to bad pathogens mm. that make home. And the body, the whole body can become inflamed. Mm. So, so to turn that around, we need to clean up the garbage as well as putting the good nutrients in. Mm. So magnesium does all of those things. But if you get more things working together, you'll get more bang for your buck. So, so eating the your greens and your juices. By the way, magnesium is the center of the chlorophyll molecule in plants. So those greens that are good for you that help alkalize you are high in magnesium. And your seaweeds and your spirulinas, you also get good magnesium content in coconuts and um, and uh, cow cow. They are all superfoods. Mm. 
But you can't eat so much volume ah. often to give you what you've lost under stress. Yeah. So yeah. it's the quantity that provides the limitation ah. as to what we can consume and yeah. digest. Now when people are low on their knees and they're very stressed, they're in the fight or flight, they can't relax. When you want to digest food well, you need to be in a parasympathetic mode which is very relaxed. Ah. For cells, yeah, to re- for cells to regenerate, you need to be very relaxed. Mm. Now, those processes don't happen when you're in the fight or flight. You're either going to run or you're going to fight, but that adrenaline is pumping, everything is tight, the calcium is mobilized into the cells to tighten the muscles. and Which is a, a description of modern life, really. That's the way we all are. That's right. And it's a very useful survival instinct, but the lions right. are chasing you. Mm. But to live in that state, you know, for most of the day, and some people deal with it at night, they can't sleep. Yep, they're walking exactly. around, they're agitated, they're hyperactive. Yeah. Kids can't settle, they're hyperactive. They give them Ritalin and ADHD drugs. Often they're just mineral deficient. They're okay. just deficient in magnesium. And that's why, by the way, when they're low in magnesium, sugar turns them into crazy people. You know, swinging off the chandeliers, they're very reactive to sugar. And the kids do the same thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can just see it happening everywhere. The whole metabolism upset. Sure. Out of balance. That seesaw is just totally yeah. off. Yeah. Off the beam. Okay, so, so what can we do now? You, on your website, I presume, you've got information about the kind of magnesium products that you're doing and, yeah. and whatever. So what's the best way for people to learn what they need, whether it's topical, whether it's ingesting, whether it's having a bath in it or, or whatever? You know, everyone is different. Um, the researchers have found that high-end athletes can need a thousand or more milligram a day of magnesium because they're always sweating out their electrolytes and pushing their body very yeah. hard. And they can also be drinking a lot of those protein drinks require a lot of magnesium to digest Mm. and they don't put enough magnesium in those supplement drinks. Therefore, those drinks are actually stealing magnesium from other parts of the body and can cause cramps. Okay. And so the athletes in particular need a lot of magnesium and also at that high end would be people undergoing um, chemo and radiation, people with cancer or diabetes or heart disease, any immune system disorders any nervous system disorders, these um, breakdowns in, in health indicate that you need a big momentum to, to put it back into order. Back in. yeah. That's right. Okay. So you need a thousand milligram a day. Um, log into electromagnesium.com.au. That's with a K E L E K T R A. Uh, well, there's two sites. We have electrolife.com.au and electromagnesium.com.au. Recently in March this year, we just launched in the USA 
So their site is electromagnesium.com without the AU. Without the AU, okay. And there'll be links to each other's as well. So if you, and also you can look us up on Facebook, Electromagnesium. Uh, Facebook, give us a like. <laughs> All right. And um, if you if you want to have any questions, feel free to email. Um, but you'll find some really good videos. Um, there are people giving reviews on how they've experienced sure. the product at different shows and expos. We don't know them from a bar of soap. They just tried it and are giving and us their feedback straight okay. away. Okay. Yeah. Right. So lots of interesting stuff to discover. And and, and another um, another and very important part of health, if you're, especially if you're doing everything else right and you feel like it's still not quite there, it's not coming together, it's most probably not enough magnesium. And that's the linchpin. Thanks, Sandy. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.